it's been an extraordinary last few days in Russia. That attempted rebellion on Saturday and then the rumours and the claims that have followed all as President Putin tries to reassert his diminished authority. Well, meanwhile, in Ukraine, the war grinds on, with the Ukrainian counteroffensive seemingly getting into its stride. President Zelensky says that progress is being made, and British military intelligence assessments earlier this week said the Ukrainians had likely taken ground held by Russia since 2014, the first time that's happened. Well, Canada is a key part of the Western alliance, supplying arms and other aid to Ukraine. The country's defence minister, Anita Anand, is in the UK meeting our defence secretary, Ben Wallace. I spoke to her a little earlier. You've been here in the UK today talking about Ukraine. Um, what's been discussed? The continuing need for us to support Ukraine in the short and the long term as it fights back the Russians. We've seen Ukraine make gains in the north and the east and the south. And we, as a group of countries around the NATO table, will continue to be there to support Ukraine. It's about Ukraine's sovereignty, but also the rules-based international order that has kept us all safe since the end of the Second World War. Do you think that Ukraine can actually win the war? Most definitely. The resolve of the Ukrainian people is evident. Putin thought he would take Kyiv in days, and he thought that Europe would freeze in the dark. He thought that the NATO table would fracture. All of those things have not come to pass. Ukraine is continuing to show that it has the will and the ability to win this unjust and illegal war. We had the extraordinary week that we saw in Russia uh, with the attempted rebellion uh, by the head of the Wagner Group. Has that made any difference, do you think, to the war? I told my team that we need to continue to focus on the purpose of Western and indeed Canadian aid, and that is to help Ukraine fight and win this war. Canada has already donated over $1 billion of military aid and over $8 billion of economic, financial and military aid overall. And that's our purpose, focusing on how we can help Ukraine. We have a very large Ukrainian diaspora in Canada, and we are 100% with Ukraine so that it can win this war. You say you're 100% with uh, Ukraine. How committed is Canada to NATO? Canada is a founding member of NATO, and we have been a strong partner around the table. We lead the Enhanced Forward Presence Battle Group in Latvia, for example, and have done so for over five years. Uh, so we are very strong and continuing contributing partner to NATO with boots on the ground. I, I guess one of the reasons that I'm asking uh, is because NATO recently held its largest ever combat exercise over Germany. Canada didn't go. Are you committed to NATO or are you really prepared for other people, I guess, to do your dirty work for you? Not at all. We have participated in numerous NATO exercises. We recently signed a contract with Lockheed Martin to purchase 88 F-35s and we are in a period of growth in our Royal Canadian Air Force and we are continuing to undertake that growth while participating in exercises wherever we can. Um, you spent the day uh, with Ben Wallace, the UK uh, Defence uh, Secretary today. He was hoping to get a new job, head of NATO. Would you, would you like to see that? Ben has been an incredible collaborator and partner around the NATO table, as well as with the Defence Contact Group. I enjoy working with him immensely and will continue to do so. So would you make a good NATO head then? Ben's an incredible leader, and uh, I know that he is very capable at whatever he does. Um, I'm just keen to ask you a bit of a big picture question now, because, you know, it's great to have you here. We don't always get the chance to speak to representatives from other countries in yeah. this way. Mm -hmm. um, we've been talking about Russia and Ukraine, but there are clearly other global threats that people have their eye on. For you, what would you say is the biggest global threat right now? I think that it is a mistake for us to focus on one conflict zone alone. And indeed, Putin would like nothing more than to see us all focus 100% on one country, the country that he illegally invaded. No, for us, we take a step back and we say that the global 
threat environment has changed overall. Canada recently released, for example, its Indo-Pacific strategy. We are committing as a Pacific country to increase our presence in the Indo-Pacific, to add a third frigate, to engage in exercises with our partners, to increase our presence in the area of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. This is just an example of how Canada won't just focus on one global conflict zone. We will take a broad-based approach to ensure that we are fulfilling our our obligations, upholding international law as well as international norms. It's interesting you're talking about cybersecurity. A lot of people talk about artificial intelligence as being a way that it's transforming our world. Is that something that you've got your eye on as well? Canada is a leader in the artificial intelligence space, in the area of quantum technologies and innovation writ large. And we certainly do have our eye on that in furthering our relationships with our partners, offering our expertise. Certainly in the Five Eyes context, we will continue to collaborate with our partners in that alliance as well as around the NATO and NORAD tables. And one very different subject that I want to ask you about, because I know that it's something that many of our viewers have been following uh, very closely, which is the fate of the Ocean Gate submarine, uh, where people tra tragically lost their lives when they were going to try and view the Titanic. Now, Canadian authorities have been investigating. Is there any update you can give us on that? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to extend my deepest condolences to the families who lost loved ones. Uh, in that incident, uh, my heart really goes out to them. In terms of Canada, uh, we have an investigation that is ongoing, that is being conducted by Transport Canada. And right from the very beginning of the search, we had deployed an aircraft as well as a Navy vessel to ensure that Canada was doing whatever it could together with the United States and others to assist in the time of need uh, but of course that investigation is ongoing. Of course the investigation goes on and um, how important is it to try and get to the bottom of what happened I guess to either find out if there is anyone or anything to blame and also to stop it happening again? Of course as the investigation proceeds it would be premature for me to make those types of comments or hypotheses. Uh, but I will say that Canada, from a domestic standpoint, will always be there to assist when others have needs, mm -hmm. whether it is domestically as we fight forest fires at home, or whether it is internationally in collaborating with our allies in the evacuation of Sudan or anywhere else. And that's exactly what we're seeing uh, around the aid for Ukraine. And one of the things I'm going to be doing uh, tomorrow is visiting Camp Lid, where Canadian Armed Forces members, together with other countries, including the UK, are training Ukrainian new recruits. That's the type of collaboration that Canada will bring to the table, regardless of the issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.